morning, everybody. Happy Feast of the Sacred Heart to each one of you. I see, see that some of you probably are coming for the very first time since uh, public masses have started. I hear some of you are receiving communion for the very first time of a gap of um, three months, maybe three and a half. So I rejoice with you, and uh, I am very, very delighted to see you. Uh, welcome also to our folks uh, that are following us on the live stream. What a great day to be together to celebrate this Eucharist. The devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus has a long, long history that in one sense goes back to St. Bernard of Clairvaux in the 12th century. And this is about the history of the feast as a celebration on the octave of the feast of the body and blood of Christ. And the devotion became more prominent and popular with the uh, revelations of the Sacred Heart to Margaret Mary. Uh, this happened in the 17th century, and I, was, I have had the privilege to go to her town uh, and, and, and visit the church where um, she, she used to worship, and it's an amazing place. It was in 1856 that uh, Pope Pius IX established the Feast of the Sacred Heart as an obligatory feast for the whole church. And it is to be celebrated on the Friday after the octave of uh, the Feast of the Body and Blood of Christ, which we celebrated last Sunday. Now, even though the history of the feast itself is relatively recent, the reality that it celebrates is eternal. The origin of the reality which we celebrate today, which is the love of God, that lies in the heart of God. The origin of this feast is central to who God is. A heart whose heartbeat is love. God is love. There is often a, there is a, there is the often heard story which Pope Francis narrated when he came to the United States. And it's a story of this little boy, I think six years old, who goes to Pope Francis and, and asks the question, what did God do before God created the world? And uh, Pope Francis was taken aback a little bit. And after some thought, he said to the little boy, he said, before God created the world, God loved. And really the origin of this feast is really about the God who simply is love and who simply loved. Every reality that we know today, the universe, a beautiful creation, each person here, each person across the, globe of the, across the globe, from the beginning of creation till the end of the earth. It's all an expression of God's fathomless love. This love reaches its climax for us in Jesus Christ. God, though he was, he came to the world and to humanity as an embodiment of love. He was the personification of love. Love in the form of a human person. So when we celebrate this feast today, we acknowledge, we bear witness, we proclaim that we are a people touched and transformed by the immense love of Jesus Christ. That we are touched and that we bear witness and we proclaim God's burning love for us, which we have experienced in the person of Jesus Christ. In the image of Jesus' burning heart, which he appeared to Margaret Mary, we experience 
the very love of God. Now the Feast of the Sacred Heart is, is, is a great devotion in the church, but it's not just a devotion, it's an invitation. The opening invocation to any devotion to the Sacred Heart begins with these words. Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make my heart like unto thine. Jesus, meek and humble of heart. That's from today's Gospel reading. Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make our hearts like unto thine. So really this feast invites us to burn with Love in the same way that Jesus' heart burned out of love. The heart of Jesus who personifies the eternal love of God for us is whose heart we try to bring into our own hearts. We see that invitation expressed in uh, today's second reading. By the way, there are a couple of options and the option that that I have chosen today is these words. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God. Yet, if we love one another, God remains in us and His love is brought to perfection in us. His love is brought to perfection in us. Sacred heart of Jesus, Jesus meek and humble of heart, make our hearts like unto thine. Folks, today we live in a time where the world could use some of that love that Jesus came to share with us. Racial inequalities and the cry for racial justice is reverberating through our land at this very time. Ironically, this year, the Feast of the Sacred Heart coincides with the day in 1865 when emancipation reached the people in bondage in the entire nation for the first time. This year, the occurrence of the Feast of Love on the day that freedom came to an entire people, a celebration is which in our nation is now called Juneteenth. This is no coincidence. I believe that it is an answer to the prayer. Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make our hearts like unto thine. This year of all years, we need once again to transform our land, our world, into a place that burns with the love of God. So as we celebrate this Eucharist, my dear friends, and as we unite ourselves with the heart of Jesus, let us pray for two graces. First, the grace to love God in and through Jesus with the same intensity that God loves us. After all, didn't Jesus say the first commandment is love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. Today we ask God to give us the grace that we may love God back in return in the way that God has loved us first. And secondly, we ask for the grace to love one another in the way that God loves us. For when we do so, as today's scripture says, God remains in us and his love is brought to perfection in us. Sacred heart of Jesus who comes to us in this Eucharist, Jesus meek and humble of heart, make our heart like unto thine. Amen.